Good Monday morning. I'm Otis Corbett, and I'm coming to you on Facebook this morning so that we can all start off this week the right way with Scripture and prayer. Our passage for today is John 1, verses 6 through 9, and also verses 19 through 27. This passage reads, There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah, And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither that prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there standeth one among you whom ye know not. It is he who Coming after me is preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. The pastor who baptized me and who also baptized my wife was a wonderful preacher, and he was able to use illustrations very effectively. And one of the illustrations that he used applies to our scriptures today. And I remember this story, and it has had a big impact on my life, because he told the story of how when he would go out to play as a child, the last thing he would hear his mother say when he went out the screen door of their kitchen was, remember whose you are. Now, one day, he realized exactly what she was saying, that she was saying, remember whose you are, not remember who you are. And he turned on his heel and said, Mom, don't you mean remember who I am? And her reply was very insightful. She said, No, I want you to remember whose you are. I want you to remember that you belong to God and to this family and that you need to behave accordingly. I've always remembered that lesson, and I've always remembered that it's important to know whose I am. Our scriptures for today, though, address the question of knowing who we are. Not whose, but who. It's important to know whose we are, but it's equally important to know who we are. Now, we've all known people who've tried to be things that they weren't. They were the proverbial square peg in a round hole. And you can make a square peg fit a round hole, but it doesn't go well for the square peg, and there's plenty of gaps left in the round hole. And we've all known people that tried to be something that weren't, and that left them and many other people battered and bruised, and it left a lot of gaps in their lives and their testimonies. In this season, as we're looking forward to celebrating Christmas, we read of John the Baptist, who was the prophet who was sent to prepare the way for Jesus. Now, we know John was a unique individual. I mean, he dressed in unique ways. He ate unique food. He lived in a unique manner, and he preached a unique message. Many people thought that John came uh, uh, came to John thinking he was the Messiah. And so this was a situation fraught with many dangers. You see, when you have notoriety for a reason, whether it be what you eat or what you wear or what you preach, uh, when you get that notoriety, oftentimes that can go to one's head. A lesser man than John may have let that notoriety go to his head, and he might have started to embrace that suggestion of him being the Messiah. 
There have been a number of people in our world who have told lies about themselves for so long that they have actually believed the lies. Now, John was not lying when he talked about preparing the way for the Messiah. But it would have been had he slipped into proclaiming that he was the Messiah. Now, one might think it would be easy to avoid such situations, but truth be told, again, we've seen many cases in history where people believed things about themselves that weren't true, they told lies about themselves that weren't true, and they lived that lie for decades. Paul told the church at Corinth and Rome and Ephesus that every one of us needs to fulfill the role in the church that God has assigned us to fill. We need to understand who we are in our church, in our relationship to God, in our relationship with our families, in our relationship with our community. The Lord through the Holy Spirit gives us all at least one gift for ministry. He may give us more gifts, but He gives us those gifts to build up the church and to edify one another. And He expects us to use those gifts so that we can fulfill that specific role that we've been assigned to do. But He doesn't want us uh, to do things that we're not assigned to do. He expects us to know when we're gifted, but we're also expected to know when we're not gifted, uh, when we're called to do something and when we're called not to do something. It's just as important to know when to quit as it is to go. The prophet, I mean, the, um, the, the uh, deacon Philip was in the middle of a revival in Samaria, and God picked him up and took him down to the desert so that he could meet the Ethiopian eunuch. Job was, um, uh, uh, excuse me, Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and preach the gospel, and he avoided that role, and it turned into a, a real kerfluffle for him. And, and so we need to remember who we are and what we're supposed to do. Too often in our churches, we have people who think they can do things that God has not asked them to do, and they don't actually do them very well. Others think they can't do something, which we, we see they've actually been equipped very well by God to do, and they don't do it, even though they have the ability to do it. In both cases, it's a problematic issue for both them and the church. We need to know what we're supposed to do and do it, and then we're also supposed to know what we're not supposed to do and don't do it. When you know who you are, that's the first step to knowing what you're supposed to be doing. John was the prophet of the Messiah, and his job was to prepare the way, and that's exactly what he did. John the Baptist is many things, but in terms of our lesson today, he is a great role model for us. He clearly knew who he was. He knew he was not the Messiah, but instead the one called to prepare the way for the Messiah. And he fulfilled that role admirably. Knowing who we are is very important to us. And once we know who we are, then we can start being used by God. Now, who are we? Well, according to the Word of God, we're all sinners. And those brought to a relationship to God through Christ Jesus are sinners saved by His grace. We're the ones that Jesus left heaven for and the ones for whom He was born to the Virgin Mary and laid in a borrowed manger. We're the ones that whom Jesus lived a sinless life for and the ones for whom He was crucified and laid in a borrowed tomb. We're the ones whom Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to give us gifts for ministry and a holy life in service of God. And finally, we're the ones for whom Jesus will come back someday to take us home to be with him in heaven for eternity. So as we live our lives, John would ask us to know who we are. He would also then ask us to know what we're supposed to be doing. And then finally, like my pastor's mother, he would remind us whom we are doing it for. This Christmas season, let's remember who we are. 
Let's remember what we're supposed to do, and let's remember who we're doing it for. Now, let's turn to a time of prayer. Let's begin with a few requests from our local ministry. Each week we want to pray for a different church, and this week we're praying for Victory Baptist Church Andalusia, and they're in between pastors. So pray for them and all of our churches who are searching for pastors, particularly our bivocational churches. We continue to pray for Robin and Pat, who staff our book and gift shop. Uh, they've had a very busy sales Christ season this Christmas, uh, but they've also touched uh, lives with the love of God and, and minister in ways that you won't uh, be ministered to in a secular gift shop. So thank uh, God for them and ask God to bless them and sustain them through the rest of this Christmas season. We're still praying for Byron Lambert and Leroy Cole, who are retiring at the end of this year. Pray that they will have a good transition to uh, retirement. And we're still praying for our first prayer rally of 2024, uh, which will be at Westview Baptist Church on January 30th. Finally, today, we're praying for our uh, Disciple Now event, what we call the United Youth Conference 2024. The theme this year is going to be uh, Epicenter, and uh, we look forward to having a great time with our youth. It's the biggest event of our year. It's uh, February 9 and 10, and uh, it's going to be uh, at Andalusia High School, and uh, the scripture is Colossians 3.17. So we're looking forward to uh, that this year. Now, on a broader scale, we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine and Jerusalem and for a revitalization in outreach and evangelism and uh, missions involvement after COVID uh, uh, is has sort of over. Uh, we're praying for our Christmas uh, e events that are going on and pray that not only would they be good, technically well done, beautiful artistic events, but that they would clearly share the gospel and many would be one to the Lord through those events and help us all to be good role models for our society as we remember that Jesus is the reason for the season. And uh, I just want to pray that the Lord will give you a good Christmas season and a good week uh, this week and a good Monday morning. So pray with me. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make His face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon us and give us peace. Amen. So I hope you all have a good Monday morning. I hope to see you again next week. And uh, until then, may God bless you richly and that you have a wonderful uh, season of preparation and anticipation of Christmas. Thanks for watching.